The tale I will tell you is all that I know. It's a tale of events that occurred long, long ago. A boundless evil known as Orochi descended from the heavens and enveloped the land in sorrow and despair. Fire, darkness, wind, water, lightning, light, poison, and earth. The eight heads of Orochi sent out evil spirits among the people. And only in death could they find an end to their suffering. But then, the white wolf Shiranui appeared. During the battle, the wolf called upon the power of the sun. This allowed Nagi to raise his sword Sukuyomi against Orochi. Together, man and beast, they faced this great evil. The battle was both perilous and exhausting. But by its end, all eight of Orochi's vile heads had been cut off. The people of the land rejoiced at the end of Orochi's dark reign, and they praised the great god who had saved them. However, Orochi's demise did not spell the end of all evil. One hundred years later. The first game in the series happened! Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Let's Play Okami Den, the sequel to the 2006 modern masterpiece that is Okami. Does this smaller beast still pack the same amount of bite? Well, I gotta tell you, nothing ever doesn't change, but nothing changes much. So what's Okami, you may be asking yourself? Well, I've never played this game before. And, judging by its sales numbers, that's probably more than likely. Basically, Okami was the story of these two characters. This wolf, specifically, who actually is the, the goddess of the sun, Amaterasu. Here to kick the ass of every demon she sees. Of course, even after they beat Orochi again, there were still plenty of spirits left in the world. There was a nine-tailed fox, a... Uh, couple steampunk owls. Yeah, they were really in place in feudal Japan. But, when it seemed as if these spirits were on the cusp of victory... On the cusp of victory... Thank you. The prayers of the people rejuvenated the weakened Amaterasu. Which means you basically owned everything in the final boss fight. You regained your godhood, you moved on to the celestial plane. Basically, it was a great ending to a great game. And because it was so great, Capcom has decided to forgo the warnings of their marketing crew and let the sun rise on a brand new sequel for the DS. Yes, yeah, Amaterasu left for the heavens in a boat. Apparently boats can fly in feudal Japan. However, did she happen to leave anything behind? Some great memories, maybe? A couple personal demons? Or maybe something even more? Because it has been nine months since that day, and our story begins here. Oh, what's this? The wind is blowing. A grave is standing. At least I think it's a grave. It has a tombstone. Oh, the tombstone is pulsating. Sky is darkening. Clouds are swirling. Darkness is forming. And the plot is starting. Yeah, looks like even more evil spirits are invading the land of Nippon, or Japan if you're not a Weeaboo. 
And guess who it falls upon to get rid of them? That's right, you and me. Of course, if it wasn't you and me, it wouldn't be much of a video game now, would it? Now take a look at this. The first thing you notice about this game is the graphics. I particularly like this little fire effect right here. Veterans of the series will recognize that it looks almost exactly like the PS2 version. Yes, it retains what made that game so graphically great. Now, admittedly, it doesn't look as good on the DS as it does on the 3DS, but... Damn it! The PS2! I'm sorry! Yes, I am playing this on the 3DS, if you hadn't noticed. I mean, I just got the system a day or two ago. It's not like I wouldn't use it. I mean, some people actually say that DS games look worse on the 3DS, but despite some slight fuzziness in certain titles, I really haven't noticed it. I also opted for the Cosmo Black version as opposed to Blue. I don't know what makes a Cosmo Black as opposed to, like, every other black I've ever seen. I mean, the 3DS itself is pretty cosmic, but that has nothing to do with what color it is. Well, but then again, it wasn't so much of a blue DS as it was a blue DS, so maybe it does have to do with the color. <laughs> hey, cool artwork. Amaterasu versus Orochi. Who's this little girl? Why is she swaying back and forth? I'm sorry, that bothers me. Hey, little girl, what's your name? Yame. Well, Yame, how would you like a painting? It's on the house. Yes, if you're wondering who the generous little bundle of joy is right here, his name is Isun. What's an Isun, you may ask? Well, it's a celestial envoy. Uh, and... Pretty much the best companion you could ever have in a game with a silent protagonist. Now what's a Celestial Envoy, though? That's what this girl is wondering. And Isun's like, what? You serious? An Envoy is an artist who preaches about a god through pictures. Because as we all know, a god's strength is based on faith. If nobody believes in them, they have no power. So it's up to Isun to spread the good word. And that word is Pi. So where's the great goddess Amaterasu now? Annie? Well, she's up on the celestial plane in heaven. As opposed to a celestial plane that's in hell? Yeah, Isun's got a nickname for everybody. He calls her Annie. I was thinking about paying the place a visit someday. I mean, without me, Annie's probably just constantly napping. That's probably true, actually. And she's still swaying. It's like, what's wrong with her? Seriously. Thanks for the well wishes, but the Celestial Plane... Pause. Isn't some place you can just visit because you feel like it. Yeah, it's not like they had planes in feudal Japan. Flying boats, but no planes. Well, no sense in dwelling on it. I think I'll take a break before I get going again. Yeah, just gonna sit back and relax. Kick back and enjoy. Look at the relaxing sky, watch the clouds float by. Uh, so, oh god! What the heck? Demons? Here? In my Nippon? I thought Amy took care of the lot of you already. Well, if she had, Capcom wouldn't have been able to make a sequel, now would they? What in the world was that? Wait a minute. That coat. Those stripes. Is that... Could it be? 